Hi, we're here after the first plenary session with Dr. Steven Salzberg, um, and we wanted to ask a few questions of Dr. Salzberg after his presentation that we weren't able to get to during the session. Um, so we had a couple questions uh, that were interested about some of the reasons for doing the actual project of sequencing these genomes. Um, I was wondering if you could comment on some of the sort of larger scale uh, ideologies of why they wanted to do sequencing for these two genomes. Yeah, so this project is um, funded by the Save the Redwoods League, which yeah. has been around for almost exactly 100 years, just celebrated their 100th anniversary. And their goal is preservation of the redwoods. Um, we're doing sequoia and redwoods, which are close cousins. And so our assembly is really just the first part of the project. And the idea is that once we've finished both assemblies, um, for each one we're going to create a SNP chip uh, with uh, sequence variants that we'll then be able to use to go out into the field and survey trees and just to take a little, little tissue from hundreds if not thousands of trees and then get a, a picture of the diversity of these trees in the wild. That's fantastic. Um, you had also mentioned um, in your presentation that you were using what's called Chicago libraries in addition uh, to the sequence that you were doing using Dovetail. So I wonder if you could maybe expand a little bit more about that? Yeah, so scaffolding, which we did in, in partnership with Dovetail, requires linking together all the different contexts. We have thousands and thousands of contexts. We want to link them together to make these very large scaffolds, which for Sequoia were spanning the entire chromosome. So to link them together, we're using short reads, lumen reads, and we take those contexts and we take these pairs of reads and align them to those contexts and order and orient the contexts. So the way we do that, the word Dovetail is helping us do that, is they generate two types of libraries. The, the Chicago library, the, the distance between those pairs are pretty short, like 10 to 100,000 base pairs. So they do that and that lets you put together big, chunk, big collections of, of contigs. But really long interactions are not there. So for the really long interactions, they make another library just called a high C library, where the pairs of reads can be all the way across the chromosome from one another. So it's just two different length restrictions on the distances between the read pairs. And those two together produce really good scaffolds. You also mentioned in your presentation that uh, you found a fungus mixed in with all the sequences. Did anything come of that? Um, well, not yet. Um, that was on the, on the, the seed that we used. And uh, we just noticed once we'd assembled that, that data that there was a, a, a chunk of contigs that were all at the same coverage that was actually deeper coverage than the genome itself. And they didn't look uh, like you can then take those and you can align them to known genes and see what do they match. And they were clearly from some kind of fungus, but a novel fungus. So we put it together. It's about 40 million base pairs long in multiple pieces. And we're still trying to figure out what to do with that. We want to release it to the world. We don't want to include it in our assembly because it's not sure. part of the tree. So we've separated it out and um, we're uh, thinking of, we'll write it up and put it in GenBank sometime soon. So I'm sure it's something that somebody could maybe potentially look into and see if maybe there's any biological relevance for why it might be there or not. So sure, but we'll let people sure. figure that out. Yeah, let a fungal expert do that. Sure. Um, and then uh, can you talk a little bit about some of the challenges with regard to uh, a hexaploid uh, genome that you were looking at? I mean, some of the strategies and the things that you considered when doing this? Yeah, so we started the project thinking about redwoods, which are hexaploid, and it's, Sequoia is the diploid cousin. Correct. And um, my colleague David Neal first approached me and said, hey, how about if we do redwood? And, um, and I knew it was a large genome because it's a conifer and they're all large. He said, well, it's also hexaploid and it's on the order of 30 billion base pairs. And so my first thought, if it's hexaploid and the three different genomes that comprise it are all really, really close together, then when we try to assemble it, everything's going to all collapse together and it's going to be impossible. And he said, no, 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 he already knew enough about the evolutionary history of it to say that those three subgenomes are pretty distant. So you can think of it as, it, it has 33 chromosome pairs. So you can think of it as just a, a diploid genome with 33 chromosome pairs. Not as I was worried it might be, as more like a, a genome with 11 chromosomes with six copies of each. Correct. That would be really problematic if they were really close to each other. But it's not problematic. We already have a first version of the assembly and it looks pretty good. So it didn't, it didn't cause a problem. Well, thank you so much for your presentation today and thanks for taking some time to answer some of our questions. You're welcome.